The Rugby World Cup, one of the biggest sporting events in the world, is less than a year away. The 80s, 90s and early 1000s were a golden era for the Wallabies and Australian rugby. In the last decade, the Wallabies have slowly dropped down the world rankings and are currently sitting in a record low of 9th. As Australian rugby has crumbled, the Wallabies have continued to struggle. At an international level, we are seeing empty seats and disappointed fans. The average crowd attendance in 2015 was higher than the game with the highest attendance this year. But what caused this absolute capitulation? Besides the fact Sansa does not support content creators and don't realise that this is actually promoting the game on YouTube and building interest? Well, a variety of monumental fuck-ups and the biggest competitor of rugby in Australia, the NRL. See, if you're not from Australia, New Zealand or England, you may not realise but there's currently 480 professional rugby league players in Australia. On top of this, you have a player base that is double the size with 160,000 participants each year. Rugby league has deeply taken over the public school system and therefore captures over 65% of children as they go through school. Rugby union maintains itself as a very prestigious small private school competition across the country. While this is quite the spectacle and often labelled as the pinnacle of schoolboy sport, it can't compete with rugby league who attempts to give every kid a chance to play. You see, rugby league understands that people watch the sport for the game and also the personalities on the field. Think about Jerome Luai, Brian To'o, Viliami Kikia. People are drawn to the Panthers for their personality. Compare that to rugby union that tries to squash any kind of diversity across the game. I strongly argue that rugby union was a better product when you had Digby Ioane breakdancing after tries, Quade Cooper doing backflips and getting booed every time he ran out into a New Zealand pitch. And even when the game has controversy like the Israel Folau saga, headlines aren't always a bad thing. Literally the only players in the world at the moment with personalities, Taniela Tupo, Joe Marla, they're freaking props. Like, they're playing in the most boring position on the field. It'd actually be really interesting to see some people in key positions on the field actually, you know what, having some personality, talking some rubbish on the field, getting into the niggle. That's what draws people in. Another huge issue at the moment is, you know, rugby league understand that giving away tickets to their local clubs and schools not only promote the game to those in attendance, but also make it a hell of a lot better to watch on TV. And since COVID disrupted Super Rugby, the Australian Super Rugby teams have never really recovered. Many fans are feeling a loose connection to their teams and the quality on TV just doesn't seem to be there. While Rugby Australia is trying really hard to work itself out of debt, it just can't compete with overseas competitions, pinching quality players for higher sums of money. On top of this, Rugby Australia is trying to compete with Rugby League for the cream of the crop from a schoolboy level. The only way Rugby Australia has tried to manage these problems is by spending more money. In all seriousness, they have the absolute worst business model in Australian sport. A top-down approach where the big dogs at the top of the chain milk money from every avenue possible. The biggest issue I see at the moment is signing below average TV brand deals that completely take away any exposure for rugby. Although I kind of like Stan's broadcast style, you have to pay to follow your rugby team and Stan Sport doesn't offer much other sports content. People aren't going to accidentally stumble upon and watch rugby or they won't already have a Stan Sport subscription to watch something else. So it's really only the people that are already looking for rugby that are going to find rugby. To put things into perspective, Rugby Australia signed a three-year deal with Stan Sport for $100 million, but the NRL signed $115 million a year per year over five years. And it's not just the fact we're signing deals that are at a really small percentage of what Rugby League are getting, but on top of this, sponsors are going to pay teams more money based on their exposure, so every NRL club is naturally going to be more attractive to sponsors. Whereas for those Super Rugby teams, there's uh, not as much attraction for sponsors and that really impacts how much money is coming into the clubs. This one is my personal opinion, but overcharging at the gate, like you're selling 5,000 tickets at a 55,000 at $20 a pop. Maybe try prioritizing having a good atmosphere over pocketing more money through the gate. The greater the spectacle, the more people want to be at the game, then you should start bumping up the ticket cost. But at the moment, while the game's in a really rough patch, make it really accessible for children, adults, anyone to come and watch the game. And finally, probably the biggest G up of the lot, hitting up local rugby clubs for sums of money to bolster the local Super Rugby franchise. <clears throat> Let me elaborate. Yes, for your local rugby team to play competitions, they need to pay a fee to the governing body based on every team they have. So where do the rugby clubs get this money from? Outrageously high fees for everyone participating. 
Yikes. But can rugby union in Australia be saved? I don't think so. I hope this doesn't sound like a rant. I just really love rugby and something has to change. NRL has managed to financially outplay Rugby Australia over the last few decades and promote the game with a long-term strategic plan. Rugby Australia and the Wallabies need a miracle, like winning the Rugby World Cup, which let's face it, it's incredibly unlikely as we're sitting in ninth, but the game is on its last legs here. This channel won't be dedicated just towards rugby or NRL. Just topics I feel like making videos on. Please sub up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.